Now let's look at tubular secretion. This is the last part of making urine. We've already filtered the blood. That is pulled everything but those plasma proteins and cells, pretty much all of the stuff in the plasma into the tubules through the process of filtration. We've reabsorbed all the good stuff and a few bad stuff. And now we're in the last part of this and that's tubular secretion. And we'll concentrate mostly on hydrogen secretion in this one. So again, this is the last process. You can see this tubular secretion happens pretty much in the, peri in the um, proximal convoluted tubules and then in the distal convoluted tubules and collecting ducts is the only locations where you see secretion. So the idea is to eliminate that undesirable substances or end products that we don't want and that, we, that may have been uh, reabsorbed or not filtered, but typically it's most likely going to be the stuff that um, has been reabsorbed. We want to get rid of it, get it out of the blood and secrete it back into that filtrate. So that's going to include things like drugs, metabolites like creatine um, and uric, urea and uric acid and getting rid of body um, excess of potassium as well, which is driven by aldosterone. And then finally, um, we'll also see secretion in controlling blood pH. And that's where I really want to spend the time with is looking at controlling blood pH pretty much by controlling hydrogen ion secretion. And so here you can see, first of all, um, where sodium and bicarbonates are going to be filtered in the glomerulus. So here they are in the uh, renal tubules. Now, in this process, of course, remember sodium is going to diffuse across because we had that sodium potassium pump that pumped out sodium um, out into the interstitial fluid. So sodium diffuses across and that is going to be then allow for exchange with hydrogen ions. That is hydrogen ions will then move or diffuse out into the lumen. Those hydrogen ions are going to combine with bicarbonates because bicarbonates can't be reabsorbed directly. Notice there's no um, transport proteins in the cell membrane here to allow bicarbonates to be reabsorbed. So the hydrogens and bicarbonates are going to bind together and, and form carbonic acid and then that's going to end up forming water and carbon dioxide. Both of those then can be reabsorbed back into those um, into the cell. There the cell has carbonic anhydrase so that carbon dioxide and water will form into carbonic acid and then dissociate into the bicarbonates and hydrogen ions. That's our tricky way of getting bicarbonates reabsorbed and allowing them then to, do, to be moved by a symporter out into the lumen and picked up by the blood. But the hydrogen ions are the ones that we're going to end up pumping out and getting rid of those, excreting those or secreting those hydrogens back into the lumen. And what we'll see later on is those hydrogens either are going to help with getting bicarbonates reabsorbed or we're going to bind them with other things and to be able to eliminate those hydrogen ions as part of our urine. So here is the essence of what we're looking at and that is the secretion of hydrogen ions and those hydrogen ions then are going to affect blood pH. And that's really all we're doing with, uh, with uh, secretion. On uh, the next video lecture, we'll turn to urine transport, storage, and elimination.